So this space um, might lead the industry in buzzwords, AI, machine learning, big data, quantum mental. Um, how do you sift through what's just marketing speak, who's pretending to work uh, AI in a spreadsheet, um, and who's actually using the, these technologies and whether they have edge um, for using them? So it goes back to your first question, and that is quantitative analysis is not enough. You need to talk to the people, understand what they're talking about. Uh, two extremes, people who don't want to share any information with you, let's say call them black box-ish guys, and the other ones that are used car salesman approach that will throw at you whatever and hoping that something will stick. Uh, obviously, you know, there are approaches. Um, you have to get a pretty decent understanding of uh, people, what people exactly do, their methodologies, what their processes, their understanding. Again, I don't really actually even care about many details of their processes, but I do need to understand how and what exactly they try to do, what the predictions. Going back to the quantitative analysis and then a positive or negative feedback is a confirmation of what has been conveyed to me and how that actually is shown or not in the actual data. It's a process, it's not literally, you know, 45 minute conversation in anybody's office. It is going back and forth, uh, but really it is a part of, you know, way of necessarily just pure sciences. I do play, uh, play significant emphasis of how and what exactly people are trying to tell me, maybe a little bit more than some others. I do want to see a confirmation in the data, but actually I need to really understand how the people think about what they do. These are evolving models, usually processes involving approaches, especially in something new as this one that you mentioned and quite of the above names you mentioned. Uh, again, you need to have a pretty good relationship with to the PM or whoever is creating the models and to be able to understand very Great, thank you, Serge. And so we're gonna go back to SOG now. Um, so again, you guys, Vasan in particular, are known as, as pioneers in machine learning. Tell me, how do you think about mach machine learning? Um, how do you apply that to finance? Is it just pattern recognition or is it, it, does it go beyond that? There's a wide range of techniques in machine learning. In the end, the majority of them can get you to a much the same space, but they each have advantages and disadvantages. And this really should be a question for Vasant, um, who's going to present later in the day on some how the science of this actually puts together. Part of the problem that you have in finance is with machine learning is that there's just not enough data. Right. Most of the machine learning techniques, in particular very powerful machine learning techniques that we all see on television all the time, are based on very large quantities of data. And finance, for all of the amount, the, the, the data that we have, is there's still very limited number of sample sets. Uh, the data is always dirty. The um, underlying process that's generating the series of data is uh, reflexive, to use a term um, that George Soros put together, and that is that the market changes depending upon the player's actions to interact with it. And so using fairly hefty techniques that, that, that try and extract you know, um, processes from a fairly small amount of data just don't work, they overfit. So you also, you, most of what you're going to do with machine learning in this space is to recognize that you have very low signal that data hygiene is very important, that you need to be careful of temporal leakage, and then you need to f use the technique correctly, uh, not over model, because if you try enough models, you're gonna find a model that looks fantastic you know, in back test and never, looks, that, that never produces any results going forward, and build a process that incorporates all of those components and allows you to effectively um, control the, the process of discovering the models that you're going to apply to real trading 
and then apply those models using the same process that used to discover those models and make sure that you have a feedback loop to check to see that the process that you're using is actually producing the, the outcomes of the process is actually producing the results that you expect from the process that you're using in the first place. And then which of the underlying techniques you choose to put into that, um, be they, you know, um, various forms of neural nets or various forms of, of tree-based processes, various forms of regression, uh, Bayesian statistics, Bayesian nets, et cetera. Um, that's up to the manager. Um, some of those techniques are better with low, quali low quantities of data and are better in regimes that are discontinuous. Uh, some of those uh, techniques are better in areas where you have a large quantity of data. Um, all of those techniques have a problem that if you have too much, if you have too many, too many features, too many, too much disparate data, and not enough samples of that disparate data, that you'll end up with models that overfit and give you um, anomalous results that you don't make money going forward. Um, Hopefully that answers part of the question. Yeah, that's great, Sog. I mean, most importantly, I just learned that uh, extreme curve fitting doesn't work for, for building robust models. That, 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 that's news to me. Yeah. Uh, Alessandro, um, so you as a PM, how, how do you think about evolving your models, training them? Um, do you use uh, machine learning or AI uh, uh, in any of your quantitative uh, processes? Okay, so um, I will stick to what is my hands-on experience, which relates essentially to uh, two main components. Uh, the first one is um, is not properly AI, I think, it's more like a, a metaheuristic techniques, and in, per in particular, uh, genetic algorithm. And um, I do use them uh, as, a, as a tool, uh, mainly to uh, research for uh, intraday price patterns. Um, that would otherwise be quite invisible to the human eye. Um, so the first point relates to, uh, to, to the genetic approach used as a research engine uh, for the development of, uh, of new strategies and, and signals. Um, the, the second point and component that um, is actually something that I'm currently testing, then more applying like on, on, real, uh, on real life and the production environment, is the use of machine learning um, um, relating to backpropagation and reinforcement uh, algorithm uh, in regards of uh, complex portfolio weight optimization problems. And um, the aim of uh, this latter is uh, that um, essentially to, to, research, to research like an optical, optimal sorry, combination um, of, uh, of signal within a, um, a portfolio given uh, specific constraints in terms of uh, uh, risk and, uh, and, and operational uh, limits. Um, so what pushes me uh, to explore uh, those methodologies is essentially uh, the need of, um, uh, actually not to explore, but to use those methodologies, is the need to, uh, to explore in an efficient way um, a universe of possibilities that would um, otherwise be um, almost impossible to, uh, to test in an extensive way. And um, specifically, uh, according to my experience uh, regarding those two points, um, I believe that uh, relating to the, to the first point, so using uh, GA uh, for the development of new models, um, it is a, a very powerful uh, tool indeed. Um, but uh, as was mentioned before, the risk of overfitting is really, really high. So it's very important to develop uh, a methodology that uh, allow you to uh, spot uh, possible um, uh, overfitting areas. Um, and also I think that um, while doing the exercise of uh, using those techniques to explore for patterns, it's very important uh, to previously uh, study the, the nature and the behavior of the underlying that you are um, about to develop a model on uh, in order to essentially like focus um, the, um, that the, uh, I consider that like a sort of engine, so like to focus your en th th that kind of engine in uh, in a way that is suitable to the to the underlying that you are you are studying. And um, another important thing is uh, like the validation process and um, a feedback loop, as was mentioned before. So essentially, um, 
having like a post uh, post outcome uh, feedback that um, allow you to evaluate uh, if the if the uh, research that you previously done uh, is uh, is effective or, or not. Uh, 